thought, just for change, we'd talk about something in the Haynes collection that isn't actually a car, but it's something you'd see by the roadside. Um, now, in the era of the iPhone, it's actually quite easy to forget that back in the day, if you wanted to make a phone call, you probably wouldn't have a phone at home. You'd have to chase off down the road and go and find one of these wonderful objects. Now, this is a K6 type telephone box and it's designed by the architect, uh, Sir Giles Gilbert Scott. Um, and there are over 73,000 of these produced and installed between, with this one, 1936 and 1953. And it's, it's quite a piece of work. It's on a concrete base. It's made of cast iron, glass windows. Um, the door, and I remember as a small child trying, oh, it's quite difficult even there, to open the door. Um, the door itself is, not many people know this, made of mahogany. It's actually made of wood. The simple reason that if you smack cast iron with cast iron, you get broken cast iron. And then in the box itself, you have got the phone. And a bewildering series of buttons and things like that. Now the phone, and um, some of our school groups have been played with this. Uh, children find it really difficult to imagine the idea that you actually have to use a dial like this in order to get through. It's made of Bakelite, which is a sort of type of plastic. Um, but before you start on that, you actually had to put your money in. And the minimum amount was four old pennies. So you put the money in and then dial the number. And then if you got through, you pressed button A. And that made the money drop into the, uh, the box and you could make your call. Um, if you didn't get through, you press button B and you got your money back again. But, as quite a lot of people realised, if it was a very, very short message, you could put the money in, dial the number, the moment the other end picked up, you could just say, Mum, can you come and pick me up? And then press button B and get your money back. So there were ways to circumvent the system. But it is a wonderful thing. Um, I know they got into a bit of a state, particularly in latter years, um, when you know these things used to stink and they were full of fag ends and, and they really weren't particularly pleasant. But they are you know, a spectacular bit of British history. Um, they were finally decommissioned from about 1985, and that's when BT comes in and you get those weird sort of glass and uh, stainless steel sort of shower stalls being used for phone boxes. Um, and then eventually these, apart from about 2,000 that were listed, uh, were uprooted and sold off. And these days people have them as shower stalls in their homes. Um, some of those are still in place, they're used for defibrillators. There's one in a village not far from here, which is actually a little um, um, book exchange, sort of lending library type thing. But wonderful old things. Um, this one, you can tell this by the crown on the top, was actually produced between 1936 and 1953. Well, you've got instructions uh, on how to use it. How to, um, there are some dialing codes, and then there's um, a quick advert for the Post Office Savings Bank, which is a wonderful piece of 1950s uh, sort of advertising with a scout and a girl and uh, a girl guide. Be prepared. Be thrifty. The last time I used a phone box was in a place called Port Scapo down in Cornwall, which is a delightful little village. Uh, we used to go on down on holiday down there. The signal was rotten. Um, that would have been probably about 1995.